Thanks, Reggie. Don't pop that off. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you to the Frida. Welcome to the opening night of this uh, amazing series. I always wanted to do one of these events with an alcoholic beverage in my hand, so I uh, really graduated here. We're here on the fourth day of our Showa Godzilla weekend uh, that we're doing with the Frida Cinema. We're showcasing basically the 15 Showa era Godzilla movies in chronological order. The Showa era movies were basically the first 15 movies that went on before they took a break and then they started into the later, the Heisei, Millennium, and obviously the, the modern Godzilla movies. We have a long relationship with the theater itself. Logan and Trevor, who run the Frida along with a great staff, they've always asked us to help participate with the, the genre films. When they asked us specifically for this, which is something we had talked about for a long time, a lot of it came down to promotion, a lot of the art that was generated for it. Uh, we did the pre-show along with getting some vendors together to vend in the lobby to sell Godzilla Kaiju oriented product. We helped get Super 7 on board to bring some things out, which was really exciting. Sean Lincolnback, he wrote a great book that showed all the various posters from all the different countries and I kind of went and did a little deep dive on all my favorite art that was produced and kind of reworked it to work for the uh, theater promotion. What happened between 1954 when Godzilla was trashing Tokyo as a walking metaphor for the atomic bomb and 1964 when Godzilla is teaming up with Rodan and Mothra to save the earth from the terrible King Ghidorah? Well, a lot happened. Japan really underwent a transformation uh, economically, uh, and also to a certain extent culturally. One of the things I was really excited about with the event was actually working with uh, Reggie, who knew Steve Rifle. It was interesting because I had grown up sort of reading his work and listening to his audio commentaries on DVDs, and I was so familiar with it. So I had spoken with Reggie over at the Frida and asked him if he could get in contact with Steve to bring him out to basically give a little intro and talk about some of the movies which he was more than happy to do, which I thought was great to actually meet, I guess, somebody that I would consider a hero in uh, real life. But I think now, especially in the last 20 years, we've rediscovered these films as cinema, and we've come to understand that they're part of world cinema, and that they are a significant contribution to Japanese cinema and science fiction cinema. And Godzilla is a testament to that. This is the longest running, or one of the longest running film series uh, in the history of cinema. Certainly it's longer than James Bond. And Godzilla is a worldwide phenomenon. The beautiful part about these movies, I think, is that everybody can take certain parts of it and love it. Like, as children, I think a lot of people engaged with the films, and I think there's something very primal with the movies. In essence, Godzilla is like a giant dinosaur and kids go from loving dinosaurs. And then I think it, there's a bit of like a power thing with kids where they, they love seeing the, the monsters destroying the buildings. For a lot of adults, when they watch the films, it's sort of like a time machine that takes them back to their youth and something they can enjoy. And then as an adult, you can also enjoy the craftsmanship, looking at them as certain period pieces of the time, looking at the costuming, how things were developed back then. It's a really interesting um, snapshot of Japan at that time when you're looking at these films. I'd really have to give a lot of credit to Logan and Trevor from the Frida Theater for even thinking about bringing us on. I've always had a lot of conversations about them, about bringing more genre pictures to the theater. A lot of the, the films in the genre I like are a lot weirder and they were fortunate to let me add a bunch of secret screenings at the very end of each evening. A lot of these movies, I don't know if they ever were shown in a big theater. One of the movies in particular was only shown on television, I believe. The other films played in Japan in the theaters, but I don't think they ever came over to the States for a theatrical release. Celebrity Icons, um, which is like a, a celebrity management agency for a lot of Japanese actors, provided to us a bunch of autographed photos of various actors from the different show era movies and we were able to run a little giveaway for people that had pre-purchased tickets. Each day we would sort of at random pick somebody that would win one of these photos which was really 
I mean, an amazing donation by them. In the aisle, my friend Chris Sapp, whose family had been in the business of selling movie posters for the last 50 years. I had spoken with him about, you know, basically wallpapering the lobby with uh, vintage posters that are available for purchase from various countries of uh, different kaiju films. This event was sort of like a real labor of love. I'm thankful for everybody that came through, and I really would like to thank Logan, Trevor, Reggie, the whole staff at the Frida Th Cinema for putting up with my nonsense, Chris with Atomic Art of Music, all the folks over at Super 7, and especially Steve Rifle for coming through and uh, basically listening to me blather on and on about how awesome I thought his work was. When it comes to the Creature Bizarre involvement in the, with the Frida Cinema and th working on like the show at Godzilla Weekend with them, there's a, there's a level of camaraderie when it comes to the attendance of the show. I love putting it out there and creating events for people, whether they're fans of Godzilla, fans of Creature Bazaar, fans of the Frida Cinema, where they can kind of converge on one point. And we all kind of gather around a very like idea or, or mindset about the, the love of the, this medium. We did a large promotion at uh, the most recent Monster Palooza event where you know I legitimately talked to every single person that was at the show wearing a Godzilla t-shirt or um, they stopped by our booth and was looking at some Godzilla figures and told them about the show and bringing that audience down to Santa Ana to the Frida Theater is really rewarding because I think this theater has a lot of magic in it and there's a lot of charm to it that isn't found in some of the theaters out in LA or in, in other places. And to have these people kind of converge onto Santa Ana and uh, have an evening out here and, and just see the kind of the fun and the beauty of, of the city that I see, it's uh, really nice.